This tutorial will show you how to create a basic event with registration in CVCRM. These instructions are not specific to any particular organization. If your site is in Drupal 7 and you have CVCRM, the steps will be the same. For questions, please submit a support conversation at support.1h.com, or if you are in Basecamp working on a new site, please post a new Basecamp message for your project team, and don't forget to watch any other helpful tutorials out on our support site. Uh, as mentioned, we are going to create a basic event with registration um, in CVCRM on your site. To get started, of course, you will want to go to CVCRM. From CVCRM, we will go to Events, New Event. Now again, we are creating a brand new event. If you have already created an event, then you would go to events and manage events and then find your event and then you can edit it from there. But of course we are creating a brand new event today. Um, if you had an event template already set up, of course you can use an existing template. If you do not want to use a template, then we are going to uh, forget that that from template option exists and we're gonna select an event type. Now this event type, let's go ahead and say this is a performance. Maybe we have like a cool concert or like a benefit or something that's happening. So I'm going to have this be a performance. I want somebody to be able to buy tickets. The default role could be an attendee. Now we always, the, the event type and the default role never actually appear out on the event itself. They are just used for reporting purposes. Um, be aware that if you have an event that maybe you are looking for, um, you know, people who are volunteers, if they volunteer to go to the event, then they don't have to pay. Um, or maybe you're looking for sponsors or, you know, speakers, you have the ability to have, you know, create an event, and then basically copy that event for volunteers, and then adjust this role. So that way in the system, you'll be able to tell who is paying for the event as an attendee, and who is listed as a volunteer where they would get a free admission to the event. So again, this default role only is used in sorting and filtering and reporting, never actually appears out on the event itself. Please leave the participant listing as disabled. Um, if this is listed as name and email or one of these other options, basically once I've registered for this event, I will be able to see the name and the email of everybody else who's also registered. Most people do not want their information out there. So again, we would uh, encourage you to leave the participant listing disabled. Let's go ahead and say concert series. I'm going to skip the event summary and put some information in the complete description. Now, this complete description will show up on what we call the info page, and I'll walk you through these, I promise. So you can say, um, here is a good place to put some quick, quick. Okay, and of course you can put any information that you want in here. You can use the formatting options up here as well. Um, if you wanna add in an image or links to this area, you can definitely do that. Don't forget uh, that when you click on the image icon, you go to browse your server, it's always going to bring up a 403 forbidden. Um, there is a short little video out on our support site that will walk you through how to actually add in images and links to your um, CVCRM pages. So again, if you have questions or you want to um, add in images and get that 403 forbidden, that's okay. There's a way around that. You just have to watch another short little video. Okay, I will be picking a start and end date. So let's go ahead and say this is going to be on the third from 5 p.m. early concert otherwise. And we're gonna say that it ends also on the third at 7.30 p.m. Okay, if I had a maximum number of participants that could come to this, this is where I could say, okay, I only have 100 people that can buy tickets. Once 100 people have registered for this um, event, then that is when 
um, it would actually close itself off. Um, you do have the ability to, um, you know, edit the message that appears in there, the message that appears um, in here. So that way, if you need to say this event is currently full, um, you know, please contact so and so, you know, to be put in, on a wait list or anything else, you can definitely, um, you know, adjust that information if you need to. But I don't. So there we go. Uh, down here, I have the ability to make sure that there's a map to the event location. I can also make sure that this event is public. Um, if I have this event uh, as listed as public, that means that it will appear on any monthly calendars as well as on any event feeds. So if you have an event feed on your homepage um, or maybe even on a sidebar, uh, you might also, well, you do also have a monthly calendar uh, that pulls your CVCRM events. Again, if that little checkbox is checked, your event will show out on the calendar. You can leave these events not public uh, for the time being as you're creating or uh, you know updating or adjusting them. So if you are worried about these events being half finished and out on your calendar or in your feed, you can keep this event listed as not public. And then once you have finished updating your event and everything looks good, you can come back in and mark it as public. Uh, you also have the ability to share this through social media. So if somebody uh, registers for the event and they really like it, they could also share it on Facebook or Twitter or a different social media option. And then finally, is this event active? That means, is this event open? Um, and so in this case, I'm going to say yes to all of those. Go ahead and continue. Once you have created your event, It'll put you on the next tab, which is event location. You can always go back to info and settings and adjust anything that you have already added in. So don't worry if you didn't enter anything in or everything in correctly the first time around, that's fine. And under event location, you have the ability to create a new location in here. You can make sure that uh, you have an email, phone number for um, you know a contact for this event. Some of you might also see a use existing location option. Uh, anytime you enter in an address, it will save that for you. So that way you don't have to come back in and add it all over again. So if this was the address of that place, then it will come on in and add the information in there. So feel free to use an existing location or create a new location. And remember that once you create a new location, it will add it in as an existing location so you don't have to go back and do it again. So I'm gonna go ahead and save my work here. And you will wanna save before you jump to the next tab. Now, if this was a paid event, this is where I would be able to enable fees. Um, I have the ability when it comes to a paid event, um, maybe I want somebody to be able to purchase tickets. Um, in that case, then I would be able to pick a payment processor from here. And some of you might have uh, Stripe or PayPal or Authorize.net. Um, if you do not have a payment processor on your site, don't worry, you always have a pay later option. This allows somebody to send a payment by check. That means though that they will have to send that payment and they can say they will pay, but it doesn't actually take any funds right at that moment. So again, if this is a paid event, you do have the ability to pick from a payment processor if there's one on your site. You always have a pay later option um, and you can set specific amounts. Now we are not going to go over paid events. Um, today we are just going to set up some online registration. So if I click over to the online registration tab, I am going to say, yes, I want to allow online registration. In the online link text, this is where I can change this. You could say, it says register now. It could say, you know, buy tickets here or save your place or you know, RSVP today, or anything you want it to say. Um, so feel free again, you'll see, I'll show you where this little button is uh, in the grander scheme of things, but you do have the ability to always have that little button. You can also choose the start and end date for your registration. If your event you know, is three months away, is there an early bird um, you know, registration or is there uh, you know, a limit where they can only register an, up until a certain date and time or they can't register before a certain date and time? 
you can always turn registration on and off. While you're creating your event and editing your event, you might not want to enter a registration date. That might be one of the last things that you do. So that way, um, if you don't want somebody to register, you won't, you know, if you say, okay, my uh, registration end date or start date is in the future or, you know, in the past, it might not let you test out this event. So again, if you set a registration date, um, you know, just be aware as you go through and test the event, if your registration start date hasn't begun yet, you won't be able to test the event. Um, as you come down here, you do have the ability to register multiple participants for an event. If you are registering uh, multiple participants, there are a couple of ways you can do that. Now, if I need to capture the same information from every single person that comes to through this page. And we consider a participant in the system, meaning that they have their own individual contact created for them within CVCRM. You do have the ability to have kind of a different situation where maybe you don't need everybody's contact information, um, you know, for that. Uh, and that might be a situation where maybe you have a tabled event and you are allowing somebody to purchase a table and then choose from there who they're going to allow to be at that table. Or maybe you need to know everybody's name of, you know, who's going to be at that event. That, can, that could be a different choice depending upon how you want to set up those events. So if you do need to have the same information from every single one of those participants and make sure that each one of those participants is listed as a separate contact within CVCRM, that is when you can register multiple participants. Uh, you have the ability to register up to a nine additional multiple participants. That is including the original primary, um, or that does, I should, that does not include the original primary contact. So you have the ability to register 10 total participants. Um, for any event. Um, but again, you can kind of pick and choose. That means that if you are using this register multiple participants option, that they will be required to fill out the information, the same set of information for every single one of those participants. And so if somebody doesn't have all of that information, um, then again, that could pose a problem. So uh, if we are allowing multiple participants, we can do that. If you don't want to allow multiple, oh my goodness, multiple participants, that's okay. Maybe it's not one of those events. Maybe you're just like, I only want somebody to register themselves and just sign up. That's okay. You don't have to use that multiple participants option. Um, if you want to use this register somebody with the same email address, I would caution you on using this option. You can use it, however, if you allow somebody to register with the same email address, it can potentially lump everybody together or all of the people um, that have the same email address together in the same contact. Um, so that can be a little confusing sometimes. I uh, traditionally uh, don't suggest that. And I suggest that you get a separate contact email for every single person um, or participant. But again, that is up to you if you want multiple people to have the same email, but it will connect them within CVCRM and potentially be a little bit confusing. But if you can put reports in place or if you know what you're looking for, um, it might not be so confusing. The duplicate matching rule, this gives you the ability to make sure that you are not allowing, um, you know, duplicates or it's not going to overwrite information. You'll see that it says there are a few rules. And basically what we are going to do is we're allowing the system to put a rule in place and say, okay, I want to capture the name and email of everybody. That means no matter who is putting their information in, they have to put in a first name, a last name, and an email address. And that means that it will capture that information for every single participant and it'll create a kind of a separate contact for them in the system. Um, that would allow you, if you use a duplicate matching rule, this allows you to make sure that you are not overwriting information um, within a profile field, and that additionally, you're not overwriting any other contact information within CVSRM. Uh, if you are registering multiple participants, always use a duplicate matching rule. 
My favorite just happens to be name and email um, because that's usually the information that most uh, everybody needs to capture from a participant because it gives you the ability to, you know, contact that person back. But feel free to use a duplicate matching rule um, if you are capturing any information from a, a participant. If you want to set a participant expiration, you can. So if they don't finish this within, you know, two hours or three hours, you can do that or one hour. Um, you know, you can definitely kick them out and tell them that they have to fill out their information again. Um, under the registration screen, you have the ability to put information in here. So this is going to uh, appear on kind of a second page. So um, under the info and settings, that information, you heard me call that, that information will appear on what we say your info page. This information is going to actually appear on the registration page. So the, the page that they would fill out any pertinent information. So this would be, um, you know, more event details. What you want down here in this registration screen and again you can use the formatting options that are listed here to make sure that certain things are sticking out that they know any event details do they need to bring anything to the event um, do they need to know anything before they go into that event you can click into the footer text and this would appear at the bottom of the page right before they click that registration button so if there's anything you know last minute details last minute details you can you know say hey we won't sell your information or um you know does everything you know double check that everything looks correct up top or you know whatever you want you can make sure that there is anything listed in the footer when you click into these areas they will expand just to let you know um, underneath that registration screen you have the ability to include a profile this is the information that you'd be capturing from your um, participants. In this case, your registration info preview. That's going to capture first name, last name, email address, phone, and then how how excited am I for this event? Well, I mean that would be great, but I don't really need that field, or maybe I don't want that field. Most everybody will also have a uh, a bunch of other profiles listed in here that you can pick and choose from. So you, most of you will have like a name and address field or maybe a donor information option. If you click on an option, you can always preview what's in there. So I have this one, okay, I like these fields. I wanna use first name, last name, you know, employer, that one's not required, so they don't have to fill that out. Okay, I like, I'm gonna use all of these. So I can say, okay, I wanna use this one. Um, within any profile, You'll always want to double check when you go into edit, you can, you know, change the title on anything. If you see a field that needs to be required and you need to adjust it, come on in, click on that little editing uh, icon. It'll look like a little pencil or pen. And for each field, you'll be able to adjust the field label, which in this case is first name. That field label is what will appear out on the actual event. So somebody would see the words first name. Um, is this field required? Yes or no. Um, you can leave view only visibility alone searchable. Every field in every profile, no matter what, needs to be searchable. You might see that you have some pre-field or post-field help listed in there. This gives you the ability to put in instructions either above the field or below the field. And you can do that for every single field that's within your profile. So right now, I'm capturing all of these fields. If I don't need, you know, country, I could easily come over here, remove country. Um, and if I'm like, oh, nope, I need to bring it back, that's okay. You can always add profile fields back over here under individual. If you click that plus sign, you'll be able to find country. These are all pre-sorted options for you, and you can drag it on back. But again, don't forget that if you drag anything back, you always want to come in and make sure that these profile fields are marked as searchable. And is this required? Yes or no. And save any changes that you make to your profiles. 
Uh, for more information about how to edit or create a profile that has custom fields, check out our support site. There should be a little tutorial for you. Um, you do have the ability to put in a profile at the top and the bottom of the page. So if you need to have multiple profiles of information captured, you can do so. Um, traditionally, um, you probably will only have one profile on a page. Uh, then the confirmation screen is always optional in an event. You have the ability to say, yes, I want somebody to look over the information, confirm that everything looks OK. Um, or you can say, you know what? We don't want somebody to have to go through extra clicks in order to register. We, you know, they can kind of take a look, maybe use this little footer, um, you know, uh, area to double check that they are, you know, uh, have everything correct and then allow them to register. You do want to use the confirmation screen. Of course, you'll put in a title. You can also add in any introductory text or footer text that you want to. Um, and then once they have confirmed anything, it'll put them on a thank you screen. Um, and of course, you can also change that title. Put any information in here. And let them know if they need any other details. You also have the ability to send out a confirmation email. Do they need to print this for their records and bring it with them at like a ticket? Do they need, you know, to have any other, you know, is this concert outdoors? Do they need to bring, you know, um, a blanket to sit on or chairs or something like that? You can also make sure that you are setting it up to look like it's coming from your organization or from somebody at your organization. You can pop in um, an email and then you can even make sure that you are CCing somebody at your office. So that way when somebody uh, fills this information out, that you guys will also get a notification. So again, feel free to come in. I'm actually not gonna set up a confirmation email right now, but we are using a confirmation page and a thank you page. And I'm just going to save my work. And this is where if I obviously if I had this as a repeat, I could create a repeat of this. If this was a, um, a concert that you would pay for, then I could set up fees for this. But up above the tabs for uh, info and settings, event location fees, you should see an option for event links. I go ahead and I click on event info. That should take me to a page where I can kind of see my information. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so I've created a very basic event. You'll notice at the top that this event has a really long, weird CVCRM URL. Um, but I want to also kind of draw your attention to within the URL, after the words event, you should see a little info. And I'm going to kind of point this out as we go through these steps so that way you can kind of take a look. As I mentioned, this is the information that appears on the info page. This is your info page. You have the ability to put whatever little information you want here. You can change that register now button. So again, it could say, you know, click here to register, um, you know, buy tickets, RSVP here, whatever you want it to say. This is your location and time and, you know, anything else. Make sure if this is not even, if this is not aligning correctly, send in a ticket, have our team update that styling to make sure it looks nice across every single screen size. If you have a map to the event, make sure that your map is working. If your map is not working, again, send in a support ticket. Um, from time to time, the map, um, uh, will need to be updated or the map provider needs to be updated. So um, again, if you notice that things are not aligning correctly or they don't look good on the page, please send in a support ticket and have our team take a look. If I want to register this for this event, I can click the register now button. And then it will bring me to my registration page where I can enter some information in. Now again, as I mentioned up here after the word event, you should see it changes from info to register. That's how I know I'm on my registration page. Um, from here, of course, I can put whatever details I need to at the very top of the event. We are using the name and address profile. So we are capturing all of that information. 
this is that little footer area. So again, if you are not using a, con a confirmation page, you could tell somebody to double check all of their information before they, you know, click the continue button um, just to kind of confirm one last time. But I am using a confirmation page. So when I click continue, um, it should put me on my confirmation page or it'll tell me, oop, I need to put my phone number in which is good. So again, if they are not, oop, filling out all of the required fields, it will kick them back. So here we go. So now I have registered and now I am on my confirmation page. So and you will see up here, it now says confirmation or confirm. Um, this is what your confirmation pages will look like. Everybody's confirmation page should have this little text in there to, to say, hey, please verify all of this information. If the buttons are not um, horizontally aligned in one line, please submit a support ticket, have our team adjust that styling um, for this confirmation or for anything here. Uh, it's going to let you know the event details themselves and then also any information that you have put into that profile on the other page. Once I have looked over this information, I can either go back or click continue. If I click continue, it should bring up my thank you page. And this thank you page, again, you have the ability to change the title of the page as well as the text within it. And it will send all of this information. So if I do have a confirmation email set up, it will send a, co a copy of all of this information, not only the event information, but also the participant information participant information so that way somebody has the ability to um, kind of check out all of their information and again print that out and use that as a ticket to the event or as like a you know a confirmation or double check that they do um, have everything sorted out if you have any questions or any issues with setting up or creating this event um and walking through all of those pages at any point in time, please submit a support ticket at support.1h.com. Our team is always happy to help you um, or even take a look at your events that you have created.